brake unit, all you need are four tools, 10 millimeter wrench, 12 millimeter socket on a 3 8 drive ratchet, some right angle pliers, or just some regular pliers for a hose clamp, and a light. And the light will just help you access underneath uh, where the brake pedal is. I've already removed the uh, WeatherTech mat just to give myself a little bit more working space. First, I'm removing the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the um, uh, charcoal canister in place. And if you do not have a charcoal canister in your rig, then you can uh, just ignore this step. Um, there might be something else in the way, in which case you would have to remove that. Uh, but this is just a 12 millimeter. And once that's out, you can go ahead and start disconnecting hoses. And they might be a little tight on there, but that's just why you replace them pretty frequently. Um, and there are two connectors up on top. So just be careful not to break the plastics. And uh, there's one hose down here. And it shouldn't even have a clamp, so pretty easy. Nice and straightforward. Then uh, I'll need those right angle pliers. Get that hose clamp off. Last hose is off. And I can just jiggle this thing. Bingo. Charcoal canister is out. So now just go ahead and disconnect all the electrical connectors from the wire harness. And again, you want to be careful not to break these 20 year old pieces of plastic. As you can tell, I actually had to replace this one here already um, from the many times that I had already done this. All right, so I lied. You do need one more tool. Go ahead and grab some paper towels, shop towels, whatever. I'm just prepping the, the area here before I remove um, the brake lines and spill brake fluid. You want to be absolutely certain to clean that up as quickly as you can. Um, I'm going to take out uh, the unit from the firewall first so that the minimum amount of time is spent with brake fluid spilling out. Um, a couple of differences between years. Uh, if you have a track, then you're going to have an extra connector right here. Um, I have a rebuilt unit from Andy Lee and swapped out this piece myself. Um, which is from, I believe, a fourth gen 4Runner uh, that had a track, but it still works. Um, but the extra connector would be right here, so unplug that, and you will have a fourth brake line. Unlike me, I only have these three here, here, and here to disconnect. So at this point, you'll wanna go ahead and get your ratchet. Uh, if you have a flex head, that would also be very helpful. It's just uh, four 12 millimeter nuts um, and various sizes of extension. I'll start with the easy ones uh, just to demonstrate. But basically what you're looking for are the nuts that hold the unit to the back of the firewall. So you can see in the top right hand corner, right up there, there's one marked with red. Uh, that's the top right. Here's the top left, there's the bottom left, and on the opposing side, there's the bottom right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the bottom right because it's the most accessible. Um, so I'm just getting my 12 millimeter socket onto the ratchet. There's an old trick that I have to use where you put the socket onto the nut first since the bolt sticks out too far. Um, 
since it's not a deep drive. So I'm gonna put this on the nut and then line up the uh, shaft of the extension onto the back of the socket to where I can get enough grip to actually rotate the nut off. I've installed the socket, which you can see right there. And while, uh, while I'm here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the pin from the brake pedal, which holds, um, holds the uh, brake pedal connected to the booster. So just make sure that you don't lose the pin that goes through um, there and you'll reconnect that when it's all said and done. 3 8 drive with a short extension and a long one going into the socket and just like that I should have enough strength to break it free. Let's see, probably can't do it one handed though. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, I know you can't see it, but I did get it. So, there you go. I'll uh, move that with my hand. Look at that. Okay. So, socket is in place there. Now I'm going to do the same by putting my extensions on it, like so, and give it the old turn, just like that. Another one comes loose. It does get pretty tight up in here, so be forewarned. So just like that, I now have enough room to actually maneuver my hand and break it loose. And all of that, without removing a single panel, nothing. Drop the socket, collect that, and start on the nut. On the right side, installing the socket. It's on there. The light is falling. Move the light. Ratchet comes from the right side. Lock it in place, somewhat, and bingo. Now, for this, the entire weight of the unit is resting on that one bolt. So, it's advisable to use your ratchet to take that nut off, since it will be under load. 10 millimeter wrench. Just want to get it on there decently and it doesn't take a lot of pressure but you just easily break it just like that I've gone ahead and loosen that one up and just crack it you see it just dripped right there so that's why you want to put paper towels. I've even put an actual towel there before. Just anything that'll catch that fluid. And these should be loose enough that you can take it out by hand. So, of course they do have a little bit of pressure on them since the weight of the unit is on them. Um, I'm gonna go get another, an actual towel. There you go, one line out, time for the others. I take a little roll of extra shop towel and jam it in the opening, just like that, to 
keep fluid from spilling everywhere. Alternatively, if you had them, you could use actual brake plugs, uh, which are very helpful, but you're doing everything you can to mitigate how much fluid spills because that stuff will eat through your paint. And if you ever feel the threads start to seize on you a little bit, it's better just to prop it up, figure out a way that you can do it without damaging anything. And boom, it's out. Basically, you'll wanna just grab the unit and move the brake lines out of the way and your sleeve so that your audience can see. Oh yeah, and there's also a clip on the far side where this uh, frontmost brake line is attached. You need to remove that. Wrangling hard lines pretty much. Okay, I've got it off the firewall, and now I'm just gonna bring it up and out. Up, out, and over. Uh. Here's a look at the aftermath. You can see that those uh, shop towels are a little damp with some fluid, but it's better on them than it is on the paint. So remove all this uh, ASAP and uh, there's a shot through your firewall. Pretty cool. The actual unit. Here's the gasket I was mentioning, which is just a, basically just rubber on um, the back of some uh, sheet metal. And here's the tricky uh, brake line. And all, all of these units are equipped with a red brake line. If you're not removing this at all during the repair, uh, you do not have to bleed that line but it's paramount that you do if you, for some reason, disconnect either of these. Then up here on the front, that's where those two, um, that would be the right front and uh, left front as denoted here. And this is for the rear, marked with an R. Um, and actually, that would be where the left comes out if you have a track. What I will be replacing is the accumulator with the pump and pump motor assembly. Um, on mine, oh, and nice, an extra bracket and everything. Uh, so I will be removing this connection right here, as I mentioned before, which means that I'll have to bleed that line and uh, I'll release another video to go over that whole process. But basically, the reason that I'm doing this is because this seal here on the pump was pouring brake fluid out. I did figure out that you can replace the accumulator alone. Um, and the reason that you would wanna do that is but it just won't hold pressure anymore if the seals in there go bad. Um, there's a seal between the pump and the reservoir 
back in here, essentially, um, that will fail. And if it does, that means that uh, brake fluid will flow from the accumulator once it's been pressurized back into the reservoir too quickly. And that puts a lot more stress on your motor because if you leave your truck around for like an hour, all the fluid has already gone out. So the motor has to keep building pressure again and again and again and again, which is just asking for it to fail prematurely. Um, so if that were the case, then you would need to replace your pump. Um, and the quick way to time that is just let your truck sit out overnight. And if there's fluid all the way up past the max line, like there is on mine right now, then you know that seal has gone bad. In order to remove this, I have to take off these five millimeter Allen uh, bolts, which hold the bracket in place um, like that. And I'll also have to remove this hose and the hose clamp. Uh, then there's also the wiring harness attached to the bottom of the brake booster, which I'll have to remove. Um, and there's a 10 millimeter bolt way back in there that acts like an axle for this. Let's see, oh, here it is, this guy. So, sorry, like that. That's the orientation, perfectly. So, that's the game plan. A quick shout out to uh, Bongo Ties, actually. Uh, maybe they'll send me a free pack or something, but, uh, I am using a bongo tie, of all things, as a rubber bump stop inside uh, the accumulator so that it doesn't rattle around and create a lot of noise, because every time the motor turns on, it smacks up against this bracket. Um, and that's what these little rubber feet are, but they have proved not to be that useful, um, especially in stopping it that way. So, shout out to bongo ties. If you're not aware, these things are the best. You can. Uh, use them for just about anything related to tying up cables, um, especially in camera department world, all sorts of stuff like that. It's basically just a little rubber band that you can make loops and all sorts of crap. So nifty little buggers, these. Um, there's their actual intended use, but yeah. Check out some bongo ties. That's pretty much it for the brake booster. I honestly don't think it's that bad of a job. Um, I will say, if you're thinking about doing this, um, it's not a bad idea to, at the same time, go ahead and do your valve cover gaskets uh, because it's really easy to access the driver's side when this unit is out. Um, let me just show you real quick. But basically, I enjoy, I recently replaced the valve cover gaskets on this thing and I did it while the brake unit was out because I was able to move all these hoses around and um, access it much more easily. But when this is in place, it's hard to get, especially those bolts way down there, um, which, uh, yeah, so anyway, just a pro tip. If you're doing this and you haven't done your valve cover gaskets, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and knock them out all at the same time. A couple of tips if you ever wanna do the valve cover gaskets. Uh, basically, I had to redo it because I did it wrong the first time. I forgot to use some FIPG on the half moons and the corners. Um, so I just popped this one off I've already done the other side and I'm going ahead and redoing it. Um, so first thing is just to make sure you don't drop anything in there um, as that would be very bad. But uh, I've got a paper towel and right now I've just been going around the surface, cleaning it up, getting this nice and smooth, ready to receive FIPG and um, the new gasket once it goes on 
So that's all the way back around. And at the very back are the half moons. Um, right, right there is one of them. And right down there is the other one. Um, and you can tell because they're slightly different color. Um, and there is old FIPG, just some form and place gasket um, in the corners that must be uh, scraped away. So I just used a little tiny piece of aluminum. Um, you could also use a razor blade. I just couldn't find mine at the moment. So I just used this little piece of aluminum. Um, fingernails also work pretty well. But basically, remove the old cover, take off the old gasket, which depending on the condition, it might be kind of kind of terrible. Um, see there, there's a little bit of the extra dippage, FIPG, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I'm just peeling it right off, just like that. Um, but uh, at that point, you'll have the old gasket off. Clean it up if you want to. I just uh, put a paper towel over it and you know, whatever. I don't really care about the staining. Um, but at that point, you'll want to go ahead and uh, remove the spark plug tube seals, um, which can be done from the other side with a 19 millimeter deep socket or regular probably. But all you would do is, I'm not gonna set this down uh, so I don't get the gasket dirty, but you would just take the 19 mil, put it in there and hammer out the centers of um, each of those. And at that point, uh, once the center is gone, you can just use a really fine tipped flathead screwdriver in the edges. And actually we might be able to see where exactly it was. Yeah, and this one is pretty obvious. You can see right there, that's where I hammered it in um, and then just pried out the old gasket. Um, and once it's out of there, um, oh, and I'm forgetting, you also have to pry up those little tabs, which is part of the reason that I'm using that flathead screwdriver. Um, so then just put the new one in with a 30 millimeter socket or like a bearing or something, whatever you have lying around. Um, and then I just used a punch to tap all those little uh, tabs back in place. This is the uglier side. The other side, I did a much better job. Um, but, you know, whatever. Doesn't really matter that much, I guess, uh, how it looks, so long as it's functional. But, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Then, when you go to assemble everything, um, the bolts get torqued up to 53 inch pounds. And just to confirm, that is inch pounds. I am I'm not going crazy. Uh, the factory service manual specifies it, and the Toyota engineers knew what they were doing. Um, but eventually you might want to check the, the torque on those at about 30,000 miles since you do this job. Um, but really it isn't so bad. Obviously take out the coil packs and then you can pull the pull the valve cover off. Um, and as I mentioned before, doing the driver's side is a lot easier if your uh, brake booster is out. But if it's not, then you can come up through the fender well. So it's a lot, uh, it's pretty easy if you take off that wheel as well. So you can just come up through there. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it as far as these are concerned. Um, obviously try not to break any of the plastics, just general rules, you know, want to be mindful, be careful. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to leave, leave some below and uh, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. One quick uh, piece of advice. I forgot to show you how much exactly of the FIPG I put um, in those corners. There's a shot of the top top left, or what is that? Uh, I, when you look at it, look at the driver's side from here, that one, 
whatever. Uh, and then for the half lens, it's really not much at all. It's just a little, almost like a snail shape. Um, just putting enough on the seams. And then the same thing for the bottom. Um, I haven't put it yet, but I'll go ahead and do that. Um, and I think you get the idea.